A leaked Windows operating system goes up against Chromebook. Governor Ducey plans for a broadband in 2021. A new Sony technology can read lips with just a camera and how cyber attackers may have compromised the computers at the Capitol. All that and more next on The Computer Doctor Show. You're listening to The Computer Doctor Show, your source for technology subjects affecting your business and personal life during this new normal. Your host is an award-winning office technician and IT specialist, author, tutor, ethical hacker, and recent winner on localbest.com as the best computer shop in Tucson. Broadcasting live, here's Aaron Moss. Hello, Tucson. Welcome to the Computer Doctor Show, episode 29. I'm Aaron Moss with your host, co-host, Travis Theory. Hello, Gavna. We're good to have you with us every Saturday at 2 p.m. right here on KVY 1030 The Voice and streaming live on KVY.com. Our open lines, 520-790-2040. Feel free to call in any time with your comments and questions. We have an awesome show for you today. Is it possible for some of the computers at the Capitol to be compromised? And how someone with just a few minutes of access to your systems can compromise you? Stay tuned to our conversation about the rubber ducky hack and how it works. And I did say rubber ducky, and we'll explain the reason why that is called that. Actually, I don't even know the reason why, but I know that is a slang term. Feel free to uh, Google that in preparation for that segment. Also, online protection 101. If you have been hacked or scammed, uh, that is the best time for us for you to call uh, in during that segment so you can get some advice live on air about online protection. But first, tech news uh, stories uh, this week. Chromebooks are a favorite for schools and computing on a budget, uh, which caught the eye of Microsoft, who wants in on the budget computing market. A leaked near final version of Windows 10X, which is a version of Windows 10 for netbooks, has uh, has some features that look familiar. The Verge reported January 14th, 2021. It is Microsoft's true answer to the Chrome OS. The leaked Windows 10X looks and feels just like the Chromebook, but instead of having the Chrome browser being the center of attention, you guessed it, Microsoft Edge. More specifically, a new and improved Microsoft Edge. Again, with the new and improved Microsoft Edge. Similar to Chromebook, the Windows 10X cannot download or install programs, but it has the App Store called Progressive Web Apps, or PWA. The default unlikely change unchangeable search engine is, you guessed it, Bing. The new Microsoft 10X will only be for new devices and set to be released in 2021 and priced similar to that of Chromebooks, Let's see what happens with that one. Governor Ducey has a plan to expand broadband in Arizona in 2021 as the need for telemedicine has spiked due to safety and traveling to doctor's offices and the increase of mental health cases due to quarantining and isolation. Not to mention insurance, malpractice, and doctors practicing medicine outside of their state if their patient travels or stays in Arizona for the winter. In the Resilience book on the governor's official website, azgovernor.gov, on page 7 of the 2021 Resilient book, goes over the plan of the state to increase. Uh, the state recognizes the essential role that broadband Internet now plays on the sustainability of the state's advancement and health. The broadband coordinating uh, uh, will be handled by an office within the Arizona Commerce Authority. Most of the red tape that would otherwise stop companies from expanding to rural areas are going to go away, as well as grant opportunities for funding the expansion. Facial recognition technology can al almost identify who you are, but imagine if they knew what you were saying. With the new uh, technology from Sony, a camera can also be a microphone and coupled with other technologies can pick up your conversation with lip reading technology without microphones. Uh, PC Magazine reports a technology known as visual speech uses artificial intelligence and machine learning software to translate lip movements into words. This can be done over a great distance depending on the quality of the video. Sony claims to use the technology to enhance voice controlled uh, devices such as ATMs and factory robots and eventually making it to mobile devices to type text messages in noisy environments. 
The article acknowledges speech, uh, visual speech technology can obviously be misused, but with another reason why we should wear masks. Hmm. I wonder will it be able to finally figure out what they're saying on Inagata de Vida. That's the thing. <laughs> well, in this segment, uh, a few days after the siege at the uh, Capitol building, some technology-minded people brought a very real threat to the attention of the public that cyber attackers being in the building, um, then all of the systems in the building could be considered compromised. So... Uh, there is a technology that uh, we're going to talk about. So, uh, Travis, what is rubber ducky? Well, I understand that it makes bath time lots of fun. <laughs> uh, not the Ernie. You're thinking of the Bert and Ernie uh, <laughs> rubber ducky. Hi, old Bert. <laughs> but there's another technology. It's nicknamed uh, rubber ducky. <clears throat> it's basically a... Uh, a reprogrammed uh, USB device that tricks a computer into thinking that the USB device <clears throat> uh, is no longer just a flash drive, but it's actually a keyboard. And the uh, it uses not not all not all USB flash drives have the ability to accept this type of programming. So there's only certain types. There's probably maybe about ten different types. But uh, with the right type of programming, you can reprogram these devices so that they look like a keyboard to the computer that you insert them into. And once they're inserted, they automatically execute a, a series of commands. And these commands are basically keystrokes equivalent to a person that's typing really, really fast. Essentially, the, uh, uh, the computer thinks that a person has plugged in a keyboard and is now typing really, really fast. Special commands in, in, in perfection, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here is why this works. And this is these are some of the things that may have happened at the Capitol building. These are some things that may have happened uh, to individuals. It can happen to any, it can happen to you, it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone uh, listening to this program. But... Uh, the way it the the way it attacks is a computer will know that when you plug something into it, it immediately wants to identify it. Is it a human interface device? Is it a mouse? Is it a keyboard? Is it a microphone? Is it a camera? It wants to identify what kind of device it is, and it registers what kind of device it is. If it registers it as a um, storage, a memory storage device. A whole bunch of Absolutely. walls or Thank security you. things. Oh. Okay. Oh, you're. It, it'll say to itself. Oh, you're a, you're a memory device. Okay. There might be something on you that I, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna not let you. I'm not going to allow you to just bring into my system. So I'm gonna be checking everything that you're gonna be giving me. Okay. Right. That that's that's kind of like what it's you know, and it's supposed to be doing that, right? So. But if it's a keyboard, the computer says, "Oh, okay, you're just you're just someone you're just something that will help me uh, communicate with my user." Okay, no problem. Yeah, what, what, I'll, I'll take anything that you send my way. Yeah, go, go ahead and just let that through. Okay, so it's a vulnerability <laughs> that that uh, many systems have. If you plug a if you plug this thing in, it'll treat it as if it's a keyboard, and it'll automatically execute. Like I said. Um, programs now obviously if there's a program that is if it sees certain types of programming inside of a inside of a file the computer and lots of the antivirus programs and a lot of the defending uh, abilities of the computer will identify that file as bad and it'll it'll either mark it or just delete it okay for safety but think of this if you open up a just a regular note pad program on the computer, which you can easily do that with keystrokes, and then you start typing into that notepad a program, right? Because that's really what programs are. They're they're a series of batch files and and other programming instructions, right? Instructions. 
if you just type those and just save them as documents or texts, is the computer going to flag it? No. No. This is just a document. You've just opened up a notepad and you've typed a document. And now all that needs to happen is for the that file type to be changed from a .txt to a .bat. And now something that would have been flagged before is now in the computer because this rubber ducky software mm. <laughs> that you have in this uh, thing has now typed out an entire program and is now sitting in your computer Which waiting it to be, could be a, it could be like a keylogger at that point so now <laughs> if it if it says store everything the person did and sit and let's see now listen i used to do this now <laughs> i did this you store it stores everything that the person's writing and it mails them you know mails that information to to the other guy right? that's another type of maliciousness of that so um so, so some experts are saying that this may have happened at the Capitol. So there, there there's a whole bunch of things uh, happening to uh, to have all the systems checked out so that uh, none of these uh, uh, things are uh, fa are found in these in those protection uh, well, found in those systems at the Capitol. But uh, the real question is how to protect yourself. Okay, so we were talking a little bit before the show um, how this actually works. Well, what if someone actually just comes into your house? And they just walk by your computer. Well, they have, uh, if you're not watching them carefully, they can insert this uh, rubber duck in your, in your computer, then walk away. And then when they come back the, uh, the opposite way, they take it out. It was only plugged in for maybe two minutes. Mm -hmm. But within that two minutes, they have all, all, everything that they need. They know how, uh, it, it's automatically provided them with a link uh, and emailed them to them that they can click a link and now have remote access to your system. Mm. So uh, how do you stop this? Well, you have to stop people from actually having physical access to your computer. Yeah, see, that's kind of difficult because, you know, when people tend to smash into the window and bust into the door and then break into your crap and then put the thing in there, you know, that's, that's <laughs> where we got a problem. That's... But, you know, it, it's, it may not be uh, so, so direct. It could be uh, someone, uh, uh, what, what, what some hackers do, mm. they, they, they get one of these rubber duckies, uh, USBs, and they just, they know where you live. Right. And they just drop it in front of your door. Oh. Now, now, use your imagination. If you come home and you see a USB drive sitting in front of your front door, what will most people do? I'm picking it up, man. And when you pick it up, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, stick it in my computer. Why? Oh, see what's on it. Because people are curious. All they right, want to see some, what's on it. They want to see. Free stuff. Bam. Mm. And now they got you. Okay, so don't pick up USB drive that you just see, you know, just laying in the ground. Okay, if you're really curious, get a get a throwaway computer. Okay, a computer that you don't care about. I got the library. You know. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, wait! Don't do that. No, listen, no, no, I, didn't, okay. I didn't say to do that. Don't do that. Okay, but you know, uh, everybody, you're dealing with professionals here. We, exactly. We, know, we 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 know what computers uh, have some sort of. Uh, Ex, extra computer or throwaway computer or bring that USB to a professional people that know what they're doing right um, and uh, if you really want to do the honest thing and find out who may maybe uh, have lost their um, their USB drive um, bring it to a professional have them evaluate it or uh, take a picture of it and put it online hey I found this in front of the somewhere you know or or whatever uh, use some other means to find the owner but don't Plug it into your who system. Knows. I mean, it's the same as when people buy used equipment. They'll, you know, let me have a. I give you this phone away for free, and it seems too good to be true. Mm. And then it's actually got spyware on it or something of that nature. Ah, we're gonna have to do a whole segment on mm -hmm. that. But up next on the Computer Doctor Show, online protection one on one are not open lines five two zero seven nine zero twenty forty. Your questions on that interview. You're listening to the Computer Doctor of Tucson on KVY ten thirty Tucson. We'll be right back after this quick break. Perfect Look Photography is a photography business that serves individuals, families, wedding parties, children's parties, quinceaneras, and family reunions. We also do headshots for actors and model portfolios. We photograph all types of events in Tucson and communities in Pima and Santa Cruz counties. In addition, we provide more types of photos than any photographer in Tucson, including green screen, art photography, montages, and DVD slideshows. We provide great photos at great prices. For more 
more information or to get a quote, please call 499-4209. Solar is popping up all over town. Why? Because solar just makes sense. Say goodbye to expensive summer electricity bills. Call or text Julie Festerling at Icon Power, 520-307-1013. Avoid the new 7.9% price increase with the utility company. Call Julie at 520-307-1013. Icon Power will help you take control of your electric bill. Ugly Goose Car Rental is new in Tucson, providing a low-cost auto rental alternative for just $100 per week. The only catch? The cars are ugly but very safe and reliable to get you to work, school, shopping, and all your important appointments. To reserve your $100 a week car rental, call Ugly Goose Car Rental at 520-261-0439. Again, 520-261-0439. Computer Doctor of Tucson is the best choice in desktop support in Tucson. They fix error messages, power and boot problems, install of software and hardware, and much more. You can come to them, or they can come to you, or even have a remote support session so they can fix your issues over the phone quickly. Give them a call at 261-5508, 261-5508. Visit them on the web at ComputerDoctorTucson.com. Computer Doctor of Tucson, because technology is great when it works. Welcome back to the Computer Doctor Show. This is the segment in the radio program called Online Protection 101 because I am on a mission to keep the public informed and safe online and to reduce the victim count of online crimes. We will consider two or three cybersecurity tips today and ultimately a book with all the tips will become available for purchase. The last time we did this uh, segment, it was uh, a f- uh, it was. Maybe about, it feels like maybe a month and a half ago, but um, we had gone over how you should read the instructions on security products and also use a pattern-based uh, system when locking your uh, cell phone. And uh, also the use of two-factor auth- uh, verification or two-factor authentication. So uh, this is tip number 45 in the, in the general list. And tip number 45 is use passwords for security questions. So this gets involved where uh, you create an account, but then they have these security questions. You know, uh, what's your father's middle name? Or uh, you know, what, what was what was the uh, uh, you know what was the city where you met your wife or something? What's your what's what's your take, Tom? Your favorite pet, exactly. You know, we have we have all these different types of security questions. So the idea is, um, if if someone really wanted to hack you, they can just go back into your history, and they can find your father. They can figure out what your father's middle mm-hmm. name is, okay? Or, um, you know, if you're a pet lover and you love to post pictures of your pets throughout your entire life, and then there's a security question, well, what's the name of your favorite pet? Um, yeah, right. you can just you can just figure that out. Not only that, they can even get pictures of your pet, you know, yeah, that you've posted in that. the pet. That's, good. That's true. So obviously you don't want to use, you, you have to have some sort of, uh, you, if, if, a, if a secu- this is just for security, mind you, if they're asking you what your favorite pet's name is, don't use the pet's name that you've been putting in social media for the past 10 years, okay? People are going to know that. Uh, also, don't put where you met your wife or where you met your spouse, that is too easy to f- to figure out, okay? Unbelievably easy. I there there was a guy who he was setting up his cell phone with me through through my shop, and uh, he says, "Yeah, where did you where did you meet your wife? Oh yeah, Chicago. Uh, no, no, it was uh, Detroit." And I said, "But isn't your isn't your phone number a Michigan phone number? Isn't that a Detroit phone number?" I said, "Yeah. So why would you use the same major city?" <laughs> Mm-hmm. as where your phone number is based out of, as also the answer to the security question is, because that, that would be the very first thing that most people would guess, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, they were using this as part of the... So what you want to do with these questions, you can select the question, but make it a password. Make your the answers to those questions a pa- Okay, so your favorite pet? Don't put your favorite pet is Fido, Okay. Make your pet make your pet's name 
uh, password one two three. Even even though that's uh, a silly password, password one two three. Oh yeah. But that would be your. You would put that instead of your pet's name, and then when that when that uh, when that question comes up later, if you have to verify it, just make sure you put in password one two three instead of Fido. Okay. Exactly. That's a good idea. Now. Um, the, and you, th- this can be done in so many different ways. So, so many different things are making you do these password security challenge questions. Uh, this brings us to tip number 46, and that is to uh, check your router dev- for device connections. So let's say that you're sitting in your house. Now, you know how many Internet devices are in your house, okay? It's your house. It's your router. You know what devices. So you have your phone, your TV, your computer, okay, the wife, the kids. You know if you can count up all those devices, you come up with a number. There's a way to go into the uh, secure the settings. administrator administrator settings, yep. and just about every router has a menu or a section in that uh, sign in where it actually tells you which how many devices are connected at that time. Okay. So if you have 10 devices in your house, but there are 11 devices connected, then you have to start, you have to figure out where that 11th device is. Could be a neighbor, could be a hacker, could be somebody that's looking or viewing your network that is not authorized. So if that does happen, you need to find a way to either change the password uh, on the on the router itself and then change the pass update all the passwords and all of your devices and if you still have 11 devices then maybe one of your devices has two connections instead of one Uh, and sometimes that does happen it's a little bit complicated to get into but uh, you don't the, the the key is is you don't want to have more devices connected to your router uh than what you have authorized because that's an indication that somebody is uh is getting into you. So how do you know, how do you access that router with these? Okay, so if you're on a, if you're on a PC, if you're directly connected to it, uh, the, the quickest and easiest way is to go to, is to open up a command prompt and type in IP config, and that will give you uh, a bit of information, uh, and you want to look at the default gateway. Again, that's the default gateway. And once you're in the default gateway, it'll give you an IP address. You take that IP address, you open up a browser, and you type in that IP address in the address bar. That default gateway address will take you to the first default uh, routing point that that computer is able to see, which would be your local router. And it should take you to the first, to the opening page for that router. And the first thing it should ask you for is a username and password. By default, it's most of the time it's admin and password as the password. You're supposed to go in there and change it so that somebody that just doesn't have access for the first time, that they just try to get into your mm. <laughs> system for the first time so, uh, and start changing things around. But uh, that's the way you do that. And once you're there, uh, then you can do the things that we just talked about. We can You can look at how many connections are on the router, how many, uh, you know, you can change your passwords, you can change your uh, SSID and, and all that stuff. Everything, anything having to do with the router would be in that, uh, men, in those menu options. Uh, we want to, I just want to do one more quick one before we have to go, uh, and that is uh, tip number 47, and that is uh, use temporary emails. Using temporary emails can be very, very powerful because um, we have uh, uh, because there are so many uh, programs out there that want you to do email verifications. So uh, the idea is that so many uh, organizations want to have uh, uh, an email verification because they want to make sure that they're dealing with you and they have your right uh, email address. But what they don't tell you is that they're going to start spamming you after they have your oh. email address, after they have all that. So if you go to temp email or temporary email, just do a Google search for that. There's a ton of sites out there that will give you a temporary email that you can receive an email temporarily and just, just confirm. And then you can get whatever it is that they were trying to send you just for that one time in that one transaction. 
you get that confirmation email, you can click on it or do whatever they want, uh, get the confirmation number or the or the whatever from it, and then just continue on with your life, and you'll never have to. Oh, I've got to do, do that, that one. Oh, that's great. Darn it, we are running out of time, but if you would like to help us uh, get a longer show, we do need more sponsors. If you have a product or service that you want to advertise, please reach out to us at thecomputerdoctorshow.com. Again, computerdoctorshow.com. My name is Aaron Moss, your technology host and expert. Travis Theory co hooks Tom Fairbanks at the control board. We hope you enjoyed this Goodbye, episode Doctor. of The Computer Doctor Show. If you missed any part of this live broadcast, we post all our episodes online at computerdoctorshow.com. Remember, the world is getting more and more tech, and so should you. To stay current with technology, listen to The Computer Doctor Show each week for local and global tech insights. If you have suggestions for a topic on a future show, send us an email at info at computerdoctorshow.com.